A Monday night, early summer, 1922. Four men leave Boston in one car, with Arkham, Massachusetts as their destination. Derek Whitney, the driver, is a traveling salesman with a tragic past. Like his aging auto, his exterior is all charm and smiles. But lift the hood, and you'll find an engine that barely functions. Logan Rees, Derek's nephew, is a chemistry student at Miskatonic University in his third year. Even as he's emerged as a star running back for the football team, his academic performance has started to slip, and he now finds himself obliged to cut his summer vacation short in favor of makeup classes. Dr. Reuben Price, a fellow at Miskatonic University, has made a name for himself in the young field of cancer research. Not wanting to suffer another interminable week in Boston alone with his sister, he's hired Derek to get him back to his lab in Arkham. Brandon Hunt, the fourth passenger, is a drifter who served in the Great War and is only now making his way back to his relatives in Arkham. His haunted eyes and quiet demeanor suggest an unquiet soul. The sympathetic Derek has agreed to let him come along for the ride, free of charge. The several-hour journey was supposed to begin early in the morning, but owing to unexpected engine troubles, the group couldn't get off until the late afternoon. Adding to their misfortune, a storm blew in shortly after their departure, and the rainfall and winds have picked up steadily as the sky darkens and night begins to fall. With quite a ways to go, and visibility beginning to fall off to nothing, tensions in the car begin to rise. And so you are driving along through winding uh, country roads, Derek believes you're about halfway to Arkham and the rain is picking up badly and Derek's have had to drop to about 20 miles an hour at most on straightaways and considerably less than that when taking turns. It's getting harder and harder to see ahead. I think Dr. Rubin is likely sitting uh, uh, in the back, hopefully next to a window, and just uh, looking there, out. That, that's the only option. There's, there's, it's not a big car. Yep. Um, and he's sitting in the back, uh, just looking out the window at the rain as it's going by. Uh, he's not one really to make conversation with people, so he's more or less keeping to himself. This is. Uh, more of an ends justify the means trip for him uh, riding in this vehicle with all these people uh, it's it's his way back to Arkham back to his lab and uh, he's not going to uh, uh, really um, engage in a whole lot of pleasantries with these people he's simply here for the vehicle Derek's got his eyes on the road. It's too much rain to talk much. <clears throat> yeah, in fact, as as he's driving along, you can, uh, Logan, you're sitting next to him up front, and you can see that at times his, his knuckles are kind of going white. He's really gripping that steering wheel hard. He's up there, Uncle. There's no, no need to be all getting scared yet we'll get there in one piece quite right Logan quite right pull over and sit on the side of the road with the lights on see if it'll let up okay so he pulls the car over um, and you just kind of sit there in the rain for a bit Brandon's in the back, uh, also kind of 
trying to be as quiet as possible and keep to himself, unnerved by the doctor's presence next to him. Uh, still wearing his hat inside the car. Uh, noticing that they pulled over to the side and him just kind of wanting to get on with it. He looks towards Derek and uh, how long are you going to sit here and wait? Till it lets up a bit, Mr. Hunt. Till it lets up a bit. You're in a hurry? Uh, I guess not. And uh, Dr. Rubin uh, turns his attention uh, from from the window. He looks over at Brandon as he says, I uh, guess not. And kind of leans forward, uh, sticking his head between the two front seats or over the front seat. And Well, I am in quite a bit of a hurry. I'd like to get back to my lab as soon as possible. Well, I, if there's any way we could get moving uh, as soon as possible, I'd uh, I'd greatly appreciate that. Anybody got a nip of courage? And I'll start it back up. A nip? Anybody? Um, <laughs> there you. Uh, I'm gonna whisper something to you. Does any? But he did ask that question, though. And uh, Doctor Rubin just uh, shakes his head and leans back into his seat again. Oh, I, I sure hope that we can get moving. Uh, Post haste. I imagine Brandon probably have a flask in his jacket there, and uh, he pulls <laughs> he pulls it out of his jacket and he hands it over the seat to Derek and then. Looks over towards the doctor. So you got a lab, huh? What kind of what kind of stuff you do in that lab? And uh, Dr. Rubin kind of glances at Brandon in the back seat, uh, furrows his brow just a little bit, uh, straightens up his shoulders as he leans back into his seat. Uh, uh, medical research. It's uh, probably something you wouldn't quite understand. I don't. I don't feel the the need to try and explain everything right now, but um, uh, I'm studying a disease, something that has uh, taken taken lots of lives. Um, I am working on possibly setting the foundations for one day in the future, um, maybe preparing a way to alleviate the pain, possibly even finding a cure. Uh, but again, it's all new, it's all young. Um, but in any case, it's important work, and I need to be in my lab to do it. And this, and he looks around the car and back out the window, this is definitely not my lab. A little bit for the road. Thank you, nephew. Yep. Crank it back up if it cranks. Uh, yes, you're going to have to get out and crank it. Step out. Yeah. Do my it's, best. It's very unpleasant <coughs> outside, um, but you, you, uh, <clears throat> you give it crank, and it fortunately kicks over. And a, a look of relief comes across Doctor Rubin's face, or Doctor Price's face, and you get back on the road. Brandon takes a, uh, his flask back and takes a sip from it and looks back over to Dr. Rubin and says, Well, I could appreciate that, you know, getting rid of pain. That seems like a good thing to do. Yes, well, it's, uh, it's honorable work, I'd say. It's, it's, uh, it's an endeavor and something I will continue working on for as long as I can. I just uh, need to get back to Arkham. Logan will look over to Derek, kind of Arkham eyebrow. 
And he just kind of says quietly, "Got a ease and nerves there." Just give a smirk back and accelerate. Um. <clears throat> Whatever gets us there. Um, Derek, you have a... Should have a message. I'm looking at it. Um, Dr. Price just continues looking out the window as the rain goes by. Hunt leans back in his seat and uh, kind of wipes over his thumb across his flask, across the symbol, the military, thinking about it for a little bit and then back up out the window into the rain. Um, suddenly the car kind of screeches to a halt and you see out in front of the car in the middle of the road there's a woman looking very disheveled um, and kind of confused almost like a deer in the headlights um, and Derek has slammed on the brakes the car uh, he just narrowly um, pulled up short uh, fortunately not going very fast um, But now there's this woman just kind of looking at the car. She came out of nowhere, Derek. You just, you have no idea. You didn't even see her come until it was the last minute. Yeah, Dr. Price lets out a yelp as he lurches forward when he hits the brake. My God, son, what, what are you doing? Crank down the window. Get out of the road, you stupid woman! Hold on a second. What is she? What's she doing out here? Brandon's gonna jump out of the car immediately if it's cl if it's uh, stopped. Yep, it is stopped. And uh, he's gonna start heading towards her in the rain. Hey, ma'am. You all right? And the woman approaches you, Brandon. Um, she seems. Very panicked, very wide-eyed. You, you have to help me, please. I, I have to get out of here, please. Hold on. What? What's the matter? I, I don't. And she's looking around very frantically. Please, I, I, I don't exactly know. You, you can see on her hands, her clothes are all tattered, covered in earth. Her hands look to be stained in red even in the darkness you can kind of see it through the, the headlights she's pleading to you please I, I just need help Dr. Price uh, seeing them in the headlights uh, and realizing what's you know possibly going on um, opens the door and gets out and walks up Ooh. Oh, what's it, what's it's miserable out there. It, yeah, as soon as he opens the door and he gets hit with rain, he shakes his head and pulls the door back shut. <laughs> uh, Brandon will will uh, take her arm uh, by his with his hand and and start guiding her over towards the car. Uh, come on and get inside the car. Yes, yes, of course. And she quickly enters the car. Um, you can see her hair is dripping wet. And she gets in again, wide-eyed, staring at all of you. We, we need to get out of here. Right now. Well, and what, somebody what is... better crank the car. Uh, the, the engine's still running, You just, but you just kind of stopped. Uh, fortunately, the engine didn't, didn't die as you put on the brakes. What is the meaning of all this? What do you mean? What's the meaning of all this? Just please what is just drive. What's going on? I, Who are you? My, I'm, I'm Amelia. Uh, Amelia. She starts 
banging the side of her head. I, I don't remember anything else. Just Brandon, remember. You, Brandon, you can make a spot hidden check since you're kind of looking around. And continue, guys. Please, we just... We just drive, please. We need to get out of here. Why? I... I... She looks out to the woods. Back towards the right. I... I don't know, I just... I, we just have to go. Listen, ma'am, you're coming off awful hysterical here. We... I mean, we... You need to calm down. I, that's no calming Explain. down. I... I don't know. I just... I just know we have to go, please. Maybe we should listen to the lady and, and step on it. Maybe we can find out later what's going on. Well, she's she, She's mentioned another another name. Well, in any case, we have to be going anyhow, so we may as well proceed and then we can drop her off. I just about ran her over proceeding slowly. Can we stop arguing and just get out of here, please? Why? Why? Because there's... I, I don't know, I just... I just know I need to go. Obviously, this woman is in distress, and she could use some help. There must be something on the way, even in Arkham. Just, I need to get somewhere safe. Please. I'll start rolling down the road. Okay. What... What? Who are you? Amelia. I'm Amelia. You have a last name, Amelia? I, I don't... I don't know. I can't... I can't remember anything. I, I, I don't know. Derek, on the road up ahead, you, you can barely make out a sign that says Orchard Run. Do I know... Uh... <clears throat> Anything about Orchard Run? Uh, no. You don't know. I think there's a truck stop up ahead. We'll see if we can make it to there. We can drop her off there. And she'll be safe. Unless you came from the truck stop. I, I, I don't know. I just... just... Please, take me to somewhere safe. I... That's, that's all Nothing I want. like a bunch of truckers to keep you safe. It's better than running in the rain. And she looks down at her hands and <clears throat> runs her thumb over the palms of them. And you can see they're <sighs> bleeding slightly. Ma'am, are, are you injured? Are you hurt? I, I just... My hands, they, they sting. I... Let me take a look. And he uh, reaches out to grab her hands. She, okay. She seems very hesitant, but... Yeah, you can uh, do a first aid check. And noticing she's hesitant... Don't be concerned, ma'am. I am a doctor of medicine. I just... Just careful and... She'll give her hands over. <coughs> Brandon oh. seems uh, totally concerned about her, and uh, and he says, uh, "Did somebody attack you in the woods?" I, I, I don't. I. <laughs> you can see she's getting more frustrated with the line of questioning. I don't. I don't know. Um, Doctor Rubin, you're examining her hands, and you kind of. Uh, you can see that they're scraped. It looks like she has probably fallen several times. Um, there are a couple of scratches on her face as well. Um, given that she, you are just you're in a heavily wooded area, it's likely that she's been running through the through the woods. Well, you'll need to get these cleaned as soon as you can, but. I don't think you have anything else to worry about. 
You seem to be talking okay, walking okay. I don't think anything is broken. But you will need assistance at some point. Obviously, you're in distress. I just... I just need somewhere to... Somewhere safe. I, somewhere to stop running. Did you hit your head, young lady? I... I don't... I, I don't know. Well, that makes me think you might have. Maybe... I, I don't... I don't remember... It's too dark in the car to really give her a good examination to see if her head is hurt in any way. You know, yeah. In any, any serious way like that. But you can you you can run your fingers through her hair a little bit, and you, it, she's soaking wet, so <laughs> it's kind of hard to tell if there's blood or anything like that. <coughs> um, but there's there's no obvious horrible contusions um you do feel she might have a little knot on the left side of her head and uh when dr price runs his hands over the the left side of her head and feels that little knot mm, well you may have taken a little bump here i can't say that it's the cause of your amnesia but it is a possibility so, uh, what exactly can you tell her? And she looks down. You see she's trembling slightly. I just, I just remember, just remember running, just running through the woods. There's, I, I, someone told me just to run. Someone told me to run and I, I did. I, there's, there's something, I, I don't know. I just, I just gotta keep going. Well, where exactly are you running from? I... I don't know. Okay, well, oh, calm down, calm down. I'm just trying Derek. to understand. Derek, yes. up ahead in the road, you can see what look like probably headlights, but they're not pointed at you. They're pointed off at a kind of weird angle away from you. So kind of diagonally away from me, is that? Yes, yep. Uh, having driven this before, is there a, a road crossing coming up? Or should no. there be one? Mm -mm. There should not be any crossings here. Okay, I'll keep driving. Okay, I'm going to move you to a map you can scroll way down to the bottom and see your car um, and Derek I will let you proceed as you want with the car slowly What and is as, this you, uncle? as you get up here, yeah, you can see there's a pickup truck, um, like a farm truck that is that has skidded in the mud um, and is just sitting there uh, with its headlights on. And you can see off to the side there the light of uh, a diner, and so to your right you can kind of see this dark structure which as you would remember is uh, a gas station is that the dark structure uh, no the dark structure is over to your right there that's, that's so yeah, dark I don't see a dark structure yeah it's you just I'm just saying it's you can kind of make very dimly make out the outline of a of a single story building over there and then up ahead is the is fairly well lit uh the diner i know this isn't turning right but i'm trying to go yeah, past fine. the car yep i get what you're doing so you slowly drive around as you get close to the car you can see there's no 
driver in the driver's seat. Is there anybody moving inside the diner? Can we see like through the windows? Uh, yes, you can actually see there's a couple people sitting um, at a booth through the window here. And it looks like a couple people <coughs> sitting at the uh, bar seats up there, or the you know the stools up there. And you can try to turn and pull in par parallel to that right there. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yes. Well, maybe they have uh, a phone that can be used to call the the police. This uh, young girl obviously needs some help. Yes, yes, you're you're here, young girl. It's Amelia. Amelia, you are here. Do you recognize this place? And she looks it over and again shakes her head in frustration. No, I don't remember anything. I don't remember this. Uh. How about I, uh, how about I help you out there? And, uh, Brandon will step outside of the car and take his jacket off if he can and kind of give it to the lady, try to protect her from the rain. Always a gentleman. Always a gentleman. Logan will hop out of the car and flip his collar up high, <clears throat> and he will sort of jog over to the door and prop it open, waiting for everyone. And Dr. Price looks at everyone kind of getting out of the car, and he looks confused. Uh, well, well, I mean, is it necessary that we all leave the vehicle? I mean, if she walks in there and asks for a phone to call the police, I'm sure they would, uh, they would allow that. Uh, we well, can be on our way. At this point, Doctor, I gotta believe that if any police are coming, they're gonna wanna ask us for qu uh, some questions as well. She can tell them everything we know. We picked her up and dropped her off. I think the doctor has a point. Well, Get her inside and be on our way. All right, gents, I'll be right back then. Logan will just allow um, Brandon and Amelia to pass, and he trots back over to the car and uh, jumps down, plops down rather, in the front seat. As uh, Brandon's walking with her in the rain, uh, he takes a glance over to that car that's parked with uh, no driver in it. Just a quick glance to kind of assess. It's kind of strange that the vehicle is sitting out there with the lights on. Mm hmm. Uh, before moving towards the front door. I believe that's over here. Yep. Yeah, this is the front entrance right there. There's a light right outside. And Amelia looks uh, Brandon kind of helped her out of the car with the uh, coat above her head she looked, gave him a small smile and took to it and as they head towards the the diner your your friends seem to really want to be on their way uh, they ain't my friends but uh Hey, look, you, you seem in bad shape, you know, just want to get you somewhere safe. And Brandon, even just from the last time that you stepped out of the car, the rain is harder than, than it was before. It's hard to see very far at all, actually, now. Uh, Dr. Price... Obviously, seeing the rain becoming harder, coming down harder, um, <coughs> looks looks oh, over, you. looks over uh, at uh, Derek. Are 
Are you going to be able to drive in this, young man? We'll see. We'll see. See how hard it comes down. I know you're in a hurry, Doc, and you paid the fare. Yes, uh, yes, I I did, and I, I am in a hurry to get home. I just want to make sure I get home in one piece. Well, that's my personal goal, too. Um, okay. Um, Brandon and Amelia, you're going in the diner, right? You've gone through the door. Uh, there's a little bell on the inside that kind of tinkles when you come in, and uh, everybody kind of looks over. You can see there's kind of an older couple sitting at a booth. Um, looks like they're having dinner. Uh, and you can see a couple of men sitting at the bar and a young woman behind the bar who is in the process of pouring a cup of coffee for uh, the one that's sitting further away from you. Um, all When the door opens, everybody kind of looks over in your direction. Um, and... Uh, Just kind of look expectantly. I think we're blocked off from getting inside, actually, but... Mm -hmm. Oh! Oh, I'm sorry. I should not have done... I shouldn't have blocked you. There you You can get through now. Oh, thanks. My bad. And uh, Brandon will tip his hat and take it off and try to shake some of the rain off and uh, nod towards the people and uh, look towards the person behind the counter, the woman back there mm -hmm. and ma'am, you have a phone that this lady could use? Um, she starts to answer and before she answers um, the guy with the beard here um, says no phone here there's one in the gas station. Oh, is that the the, the building next door then? That's right. I run that place. You need uh, to use the phone? Yes, sir. You can see I'm kind of looking at Amelia. She's got um, the, kind of got the coat tied around her neck. She's looking around, wide-eyed, shivering. Yeah. It, it, the the man is is looking back and forth between you, Brandon, and Amelia, kind of curiously. And uh, he he says, uh, "Why don't I go uh, here?" He says, "I'll I'll take you over." And uh, <clears throat> he says, uh, everything all right, Amelia? Uh, you, you know who I am? He looks at you like that was a weird question. And he says, of course I know who you are. Uh, who are you? I, I don't, I don't remember anything. I'm... I'm Sam. Come on now. You come down here all the time. Amelia just shakes her head. I I don't I don't remember you or this place. He kind of gives Brandon a sort of a sideways look. Uh Brandon, you've seen the look before. It's it's like one of distrust um suspicion. Brandon's wearing a shocked look as well, looking back and forth between the two. And he, well, uh, uh, looks like uh, we came to the right place. Uh, we found her walking in the rain on the side of the road. He uh, he take he puts his arm around Amelia's shoulder and kind of guides her to a stool at the at the uh, at 
the bar at the bar there. She's and he said, okay. "Found her. She shouldn't be out in this weather." No, sir. It's quite dreadful. I'll say. What do you mean? You mean I, I've come in here before? Come in here all the time. <laughs> he laughs. He says, there's not much. Do you, do you know where I'm from? I, I, I don't, I, I can't remember anything. He, he turns to Brandon. He said, what'd you do to this poor girl? Brandon puts like both of his hands up in a, type of, you know, surrender, and, uh, I didn't do a thing. She might have taken a bump on the head. Says, I told you, though, we found her on the side of the road while we were driving. He, he looks behind, he says, who's we? I don't see anybody else. And Brandon will look out towards the window, towards the car. Yeah. Uh, and uh, point out towards them, uh, my companions. We're uh, we're on our way. Logan, on our you way can home. see through the window, and you can kind of see there's an exchange going on in there. You see this, and um, your impression is that not that it's exactly hostile, but it's not. You can see that it's it's not. It, it's kind of going south a little bit in your opinion, just from from where you're sitting. Okay. Um, Logan will look over to Derek. Something's happening in there. Something's, something's not right here. Well, we promised to Doc we'd get him on his way. You think you can, can speed things up in there? <clears throat> when, you, when you mention uh, the doctor, he... He looks up from whatever he's fiddling with. Oh, um, uh, 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 well, I'm sorry, what was that? Just saying you wanted to get to your lab, Doc. I know you got important scientific work to do. Okay, well, uh, yes, well, uh, if this will help speed things up, um, unfortunately, I must uh, meet nature's call anyhow. <laughs> I might as well... Head on in there. Good call there, Doctor. I mean, we're not going anywhere fast anyway. Yes, well, un unfortunately, these are one of the things that must be done. And Dr. Price will, will pull his coat up tightly around his neck. <laughs> yeah, a lot of good that does. <laughs> and he'll, he'll grimace as he opens the door and steps out into the rain and quickly as fast as uh, his little old man legs will carry him he shuffles around and makes it to the front door try a dexterity check for me you bastard <laughs> hey you're a, sprightly, you're a sprightly young doctor today he's a spring chicken <laughs> Yeah, there's a, there's a couple of, you know, it, it, the it's very slick the mud there, but uh but you uh you keep your feet and get inside. And Both. as he pushes through the door and he hears the little tink tink of the of the bell jingle and the bright lights as he walks in and adjusts his eyes, tries to shake the water off of him and looks around at everyone in the room. Yeah. And then looks looks at uh, Brandon, looks at uh, Amelia, everyone, and just immediately uh, bypasses them and ignores them, and looks to the lady <laughs> behind behind the the bar, the counter. Ma'am, um, your facilities, please. Yeah, she says they're around the side. Mister Keelum has the keys. Uh huh, and. Oh. Where can I get these keys? The the uh, red-haired guy with the beard standing right next to you says, uh, I have those keys. Sir, the keys to the facilities, please. 
He says, I'll, uh, I'll walk you out there. Out there? It's around the side. Uh, yes, of course it is. Well, lead on. I will follow you. He says, Mary, hand me that uh, umbrella there. And she reaches down behind the counter and pulls out an umbrella and hands it over to him. And uh, he says, and uh, right this way, Mr. Uh, whatever you said your name was. Price. Dr. Price. Ah, uh, doctor, eh? And he leads outside. Um, so what do you guys do inside? Uh, Logan looks around and sees the doctor heading out as he's kind of jogging in. And he turns and looks at Brandon. Well, first the doctor, did, he didn't even want to leave the car, and now he's going back out there. I never understand that. The old woman in the booth up there turns around and she kind of smiles and says, Sure is wet out there, isn't it? Yes. Oh, yeah. Sure. Sure is. And the other one says, Raining cats and dogs, mother. Raining cats and dogs. And Amelia looks to the woman behind the counter. You... So you know me. I've... I've come in here before. Uh, do I... What... Uh, who exactly... Who am I? She just... She kind of smirks and says, That's rich. But... What? I... And she... Balls a fist and kind of slams on the table. Look! I, just tell me who I am! Um, she's actually kind of distracted. She's she's not really even paying attention much to you when you say that now. She just kind of keeps looking out the window. And Amelia kind of looks around to the rest of the patrons. Anyone? Um, the guy sitting at the, at there, he just kind of looks, he just sort of vaguely looks over in your direction, but you see he's, he's lost completely, and he's, um, he's, he's drinking a cup of coffee, and he, he seems completely uninterested in what's going on, um, and the, the older couple, um, they're both kind of looking at you with this trying to be helpful face, but they're not saying anything. Are the rest of you just uh, standing in the entry there? Oh, Logan will... He looks over and sees a familiar face, and he pulls his collar up high and really tries to shield his face. Uh, and he will make his way over to a booth over Yeah, Brandon was going to kind of step over and greet them at the door and say, uh... uh well, she must have taken some nasty bump to the head. We're going to have to have the doctor look at her or something. Uh, these people know her. Oh, will they tell her who she is or where she's from? Well, they're not being quite helpful. How not helpful? Her name's Amelia, and that's all we know. Uh, Brandon will walk over to Amelia and say, um, Well, do you want to take a seat and rest for a bit? Amelia takes her head out of her hands and looks up to uh, Brandon. Uh, yes. I, I, once that, that Sam gets back, maybe he can be more helpful. She 
shoots a glare over to the one with the counter. Um, she's actually gone back up to the other side saying, you want more coffee, mister? Amelia makes her way over to the booth where Logan is, sits across. I, I don't know what's going on. Logan will just look Amelia over and kind of chews his lip for a second. So, you don't remember any of this? No! You don't remember any anything here? I, I don't well, remember anything. I, I don't know how clear I can be. Yeah, yeah. Without, everybody here seems to know you I'm, I'm just trying to put some pieces um together so that i can kind of make some sense of some of this um the waitress really seems to not appreciate the fact that you're here just find that very odd i find this entire thing odd frustrating okay all right Calm down. Don't need to tell me to calm down. I don't... <sighs> Alright, just calm down. Let's get you a glass of water or something. And Amelia kind of slams her fist down on the table. You tell me to calm down one more time. Right, just relax. The waitress says, You boys want anything to drink? Or something to eat? She said the menu's kind of limited now. You, you can see she's kind of talking sort of by rote. Um, she's really looking out the window most of the time while she's talking to you. So she's only kind of half paying attention. Like she's just going through the motions. Brandon, Derek. Lance. Uh, uh, go ahead. Derek tries to catch her before she gets near the table. Give her a, a winning... Derek salesman smile. <laughs> this is the waitress. Yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, and he said, and he says, "Where does this crazy lady belong? We need to be on our way." Um. Make a psychology check for me. Psychoanalysis. Uh, no. Oh, psychology. psychology. Okay. Um, she, uh, <laughs> she says, um, she just shrugs. She says, you can leave her here. I'm sure she'll be fine. You can get her home? Sure. Brandon, you can make a psychology check, since you're right there. Um, she's definitely does not like these questions. You can see she's getting a little nervous, and um, you can see her, she's, her hands are getting a little fidgety around the, and, and she kind of goes over and just picks up the coffee pot. Um, and uh, says, uh, coffee, kind of puts out a cup for you, Derek. Thank you. And she pours it. Brandon. Says, it looks like the weather's getting pretty bad out there. If you guys are going <laughs> to, she says, she says, there's not much around here. Wherever you're going, she said, if you want to get there, you probably got to leave. Gosh, I'd say right now. <laughs> That's what we in the sales biz call a hint. He'll give her another winning smile. She's not she's not feeling the Derek charm. Derek is used to <laughs> some response. Yeah, the thing is it she you feel like you're talking to half of her. Like she's really 
she's she's more annoyed than interested in what you're saying. Like you're in irritation right now. Yeah, let me get a cup of coffee, ma'am. Would you? Uh, sure. She pours you some. Brandon looks out the window, kind of trying to follow her gaze and noticing uh, only the darkness. Turns back to the gentleman sitting next to him. And are you are you taking up the seat next to that guy? Uh, Brandon's still standing oh, in between standing. Yep. Derek mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the guy there. Okay. And uh, says, a "Hell of a night, huh, sir." He he doesn't seem like he heard you. And uh, Brandon will look at him. Uh, uh, what's that? And he'll kind of tap him on the shoulder. A he hell of a kinda, night. He kind of jumps when you tap him on the shoulder, and he goes like, "Huh? Oh, sorry, what?" Oh, it's a, a dreadful night, ain't it, out here? Yeah, dreadful, all right. You didn't, uh, were you just driving on the road? Yes, sir. He, he kind of grabs your shoulder, the, the, the material of your coat on your, by your shoulder and kind of pulls you in a little closer and he says, you didn't see that light out there, did you? And he kind of looks past your, past you, like out the window. You mean the car parked out in the water, in the rain? No, no, that, that weird light. Mm. Brandon looks kind of a little nervous over towards the old couple and back towards him and no, sir. This is, I swear. Came right out of nowhere. I don't know. Didn't seem right. Didn't seem natural. Huh. And, uh... The, the girl, the waitress just... just kind of says, um, don't go scaring the customers, sir. I'm sure there's nothing out there. Uh, Brandon will take the cup of coffee and put a little hint of Irish coffee in there. And uh, did you see a light, ma'am? Me? No, I don't know what he's talking about. And Brandon will look over towards, over towards Derek and, and a raise an eyebrow. Well, thanks for the coffee. Start to filter through his pocket to get some change. Mm-hmm. Um, outside, as you two are, the, the doctor and the gas station owner are walking through, um, this guy kind of has extends his umbrella over the old man the doctor and um, He says uh, you're a doctor. Tell me what's going on here? Well, I, I can't uh, say I quite understand what you mean. What's going on here? He says that fellow with the hat. You don't look right to me He didn't do something to that girl did he how well you know him? do something to that girl. Well, I don't know the man at all, but I can tell you that that girl was in the middle of the road as we were driving. We picked her up and we brought her here. She seems to be injured and confused. We came here for help. That man in the hat did nothing to her. Hmm. Well, all right. He just says, where are y'all going? Back to Arkham as soon as possible. I see. 
He says, here's the bathroom. And he, uh, he opens the door for you with the lock, with the key. He says, go on. I'll wait out here for you. And uh, Dr. Price just nods his head and walks in to relieve himself. Okay. Um, yes, it's a, it, it takes a little while. Because <laughs> you're... Damn prostate. Yeah. <laughs> it, it takes several, you know. <laughs> it's when you think you're done, you're not really done. <laughs> and then... <laughs> And yep. so then, and you're finally done. And then, uh, Dr. Price, uh, zips up, cleans up, and heads back out. Okay. Just move you. Here, inside. Hmm. <sighs> And he looks around for the man that walked him back here. Yeah, you don't see him. Of course, you can't see very far, but you don't see him. Of course. And he hunches his shoulders and heads back around, following the building, mumbling the whole way, getting soaked. Just, uh, just... Brains is soft as lips. Yep. Um, and when, by the time he gets back inside, that's kind of we're caught up to where everybody was in there. Oh, and, and again, guys, with the see the old, you see the doctor kind of step in, and he is soaked. Yeah. Bone. Again, with the jingle of the the bell as he walks in, the bright lights again. He shakes the water off of him, mumbling and cursing under his breath. And he's uh, looking around for, for, the, for the guy that walked him back there, just to give him a piece of his mind, walking off with the umbrella. Where did that man go? He's not with you. No, of course he's not with me. I walked in alone, didn't I? He was going to wait outside the restroom for me, walk me back. I assumed he left and came back here. No, he's been in here. Just you came back. She's looking outside. Damn it. It's the only one who was apparently willing to talk to me. Oh, hey, Doc. Uh, Brandon, Brandon jumps up off the stool, starts to make his way over towards the doctor. Uh, yeah, yes, young man. Um, apparently, there's a phone next door, and uh, uh, I guess the uh, the red hat man he might own the store. That's right. I think he did say something along those lines, didn't he? That he owns the place next door, and there's a foam there. That's probably where he went. No need for everyone to get worried. And, uh, well, apparently they know who she is. Amelia, your name is, right? Yes, but no one else is really within to tell me who I am besides that uh, Sam guy. Well, well, ma'am, I'm I'm Brandon Hunt, if you can remember that name. He tips his hat. She nods. I thank you, Brandon, for the coat. I'm sorry it's a bit damp. That's all right. Uh, maybe, maybe have the doctor look at your head. And uh, Dr. Price hears his name being mentioned and looking at her head. We already know she has a bump on her head. 
What she needs is help. That means getting that phone. Why don't you walk her across the way to use the phone? I need to... I need a hot cup of coffee. Before I catch my death. And he turns to the lady behind the counter. Coffee, please. Uh, Amelia? I, yes. My name's Derek. Uh, have you checked your pockets? Have you seen if there's anything to identify who you are? Maybe a key? A, just anything? Amelia pats herself down, seeing if there's anything on her. Um, there's just the locket around your neck. Other than that, your pockets are pretty empty. Yeah, she takes a locket into her hands and looks at it. Not really focused on it before. Just just this. And Does it have a picture in it? I shall open it. If there's anything inside. Yeah. Um, there's no picture. Um, maybe you were hoping for a portrait or something like that. You're not really sure. It's It's like a Inside, it's got like a coin. Um, it's, it's put in there, and when you look at it, you know there's something significant about it to you, but you can't quite remember what that is. And really, but you, you, you feel like it, it is a, it's your personal thing, like this is yours. Yeah, she'll take out the coin and. I'll look it over, looking at the edges, running her fingers along it before putting it back into the locket and closing it. Just, just this, nothing identifying or anything like that. What is it? What is that little thing? A coin. I can't quite see it. It's... What kind of coin? I, I don't know, but it's, it's mine. That's all I, that's all I know. May Dr. I see Price, it? Dr. Price looks over and sees them all still standing there. Well, are one of you going to walk her across the way to use the phone? Yeah, Doctor, I'd, I'll take her over there. Well, if the fellow with the key isn't there, you're not going to have an easy time getting to the phone. Where else would he be? We'll just look anyway. I just hope we're far enough. Yeah, Brandon. Brandon uh, puts his coffee down on the table and turns around, walks towards the door with the lady. The the waitress says, "There's really no need for any of that. We can, I can make, I can make sure that Amelia gets home to her grandfather." What? What grandfather? She, you know, looks to the waitress, narrowing her eyes. Um, Derek and Brandon make psychology checks. Uh, Derek, you can tell that as soon as um, the waitress mentioned the grandfather, she she kind of mentally punches herself for saying something like you can just see that she didn't mean to say that and she she tries to cover it up and just says i'll just i'll get her home it's no problem and amelia just starts panicking just but my grandfather I, he's in he's in danger I, I, I ran away from the cottage i, I he's He's, it's something happening to him, I, I, I don't know what. And she starts to kind of clutch her chest. I, she says, the, the, the waitress says, calm down, Amelia, just just take a seat, I'll get you something to drink. I did, no, 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 no,
And seeing her start to panic, uh, Dr. Price pushes a, pushes himself up from the stool and just starts walking over to her. And he walks over to Amelia and grabs her by the shoulders, <laughs> pulls her around and looks at her in the eyes. Young lady, you need to calm down. My name is Dr. Price. Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath in through your nose, out through your mouth. In through your nose, out through your mouth. That's it. I, I, Take a deep breath. I can't be calm right now. My, I don't. I don't know what happened, but there's something, something terrible. Yes, well, something terrible may have happened. It, it did. We will be notifying the police post haste. And when he says that, he looks over at the other uh, at the other men, Derek and Logan and Brandon. Someone will go call them very soon here. But I need you, Amelia. Look at me. I need you. To take a deep breath and calm down. <laughs> she takes a deep breath, her body trembling in front of the doctor. Takes a deep breath. That's in. right. And he kind of leads her back over to this uh, table and sits her down. And he looks over at the lady behind the counter. Yeah, she's coming out around the counter now. You need to bring coffee and water now. Um, she says sure and goes goes back. What? And get some. Whatever is, is running from it. Here's something something awful like I left him behind. <clears throat> Logan comes in, the, the bell tinkles. Dr. Price looks up past Amelia as Logan walks in. And he looks back to Amelia. Did you say there were others in danger? I, no, no, just... Just my grandfather. I, I left him there. He's, he's back in the cottage. What is your grandfather's name? I... I... I, I don't... I don't know. I don't know. Um... The, the waitress says, Amelia, calm down. It'll be fine. I'll... I, I'll get you home. Your grandfather's fine, I'm sure. Why is everyone telling me to calm down? I... <laughs> and Dr. Price looks at the lady um, at the, who brought the coffee. What is her grandfather's name? Godfrey. Dr. Godfrey. Dr. Godfrey. He's a doctor in the area. Retired now, I think. So he with said, him. "Look, I, I should, I should probably get you home, Amelia. It's the, the, the weather's just getting worse, and I'm sure these gentlemen need to be moving on. It's, it's not going to be drivable for much longer." Why'd you wait this long? Why don't we take the lead? Might be too dangerous to get up to that to the cabin now, anyway, Amelia. I think you might just have to wait here. Not, you can wait here with me. Not that. You only this Sam addressed me and you walked away. I don't understand. Well, well, we could take her home, right, guys? And Brandon looks around towards the others. M Mary says, um, uh, Sam has a car. I, I could use that to get her home. You, you fellas probably ought to be moving along, don't you think? I don't know if it's safe. It's There's something happening there. 
Amelia, didn't you just tell us you had to get away from there at all costs? I, I think, I think it was there. I, I think, I, I think that's where I left. I, I think that's where I ran from. Left. The, the cottage. That's where I ran. That's where I ran from. Um, the waitress turns to Dr. Price and she says, she's, she's hysterical, doctor. You can see that. I, I'll take care of her. She needs to be among friends now. Yeah, she shouldn't. She. We've probably troubled you enough with our small town problems. <clears throat> yes. Well, she does need a way home. Where, where is that man who showed me to the facilities? He did say that he has a phone next door. Why isn't he back yet? Where is Sam? Where, if you don't mind mind me asking, where are those people that should be out in that truck there? It's just sitting out in the road. I mean, what's going on? The the waitress jerks a thumb back at the guy sitting at the bar. She said, that's his truck. Yeah, well, it's out in the middle of the road, and the lights are just on. Yeah, he said he saw something, some kind of light. Yeah, I just saw a light, too, up the road. Yeah, Brandon will look towards the waitress and be like, So you think she needs to be among friends now, huh? Well, but when we came in here, you acted like you didn't know her. Of course I know her. She lives around here. You, uh... Don't seem like you much care for her. I mean, I saw you casting stairs her way early. I don't know what you mean. You know what I mean. We've been friends a while now, ever since she came here. I've been nice to her. That's not what your face was telling me. Look, can we your stop eye? arguing and... Please, he needs help. What business is it of yours anyway? Why is it so important that you take her home? Because I'm her friend, not you. You don't so even know her. So you say, so you say. Oh, well, you're right, I don't know her. But neither do these other fellows, and they seem very willing to help. You can see she's getting increasingly frustrated. What's the matter, honey? She says, I think the diner ought to close for the night anyway. I don't think anybody's coming through. If you boys want one last cup of coffee or something, that's fine, but I'm, I'm going to have to be closing up. And she goes back behind there and she says, um, or she goes over to the, uh, starts making her way down towards the couple. She says, I'm afraid I'm going to be closing up the diner now. And, uh, and she says, well, what are we going to do, dear? It's too dangerous out there to drive the car. Teddy, you, he, he, he's, he's, his eyesight's not very good these days. And Teddy says, ah, eyesight's just fine. I'll be fine. And she says, can't, you can't even see how bad it is out there. She says, I'm going to have to ask you to go to Mr. Whatever your name is. And he goes, Jake. My name's Jake. She says, well, your truck's still out there. He says, I don't know if it even worked now. He says, well, you've got to try to move it. It's a hazard. And she says, all right, everybody, let's go, let's go. Well, then I guess that's settled then. And, uh, I guess Amelia, you're coming with us then. I just... And he looks over towards the dock and Amelia. <clears throat> yes, well, I still think we need to be going next door to find that phone. I don't know why that hasn't we happened just, yet. We need to go back to the, the cottage to see if my, if my grandpa's okay. Well, you don't remember your... The phone number at your cottage, do you? No, I... I don't. 
Do you remember the way to the cottage? Uh, oh, blasted this generation. You kids. Mar Mary says, that's fine. I know the way to the cottage. I'll get her there. And Dr. Price just walks out the door and into the rain and starts <laughs> walking across to the building. <laughs> Just, yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, he just heads out in the rain. Well, I guess I better go chase him down. Hurry. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, the doctor, you can see you're just staring at wall there. Hey, Doc, where are you going? I'm looking for a phone. Look, sl slow down a little. Keep up. Um, You're for an the, old man. The waitress comes over and takes Amelia by the arm and says, Come on, Amelia, just wait here with me. And she kind of starts to try to pull you back towards the uh, booth. I'm not waiting. I, I need to go see him. I, 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 he needs help or something. She says, I promise your grandfather's fine. He's fine. Uh, I need to go now. It's, it's no time to wait. She yanks her arm away. Who even are you? I'm Mary. You know me. No, I don't. Well, see, that's the problem. Something's wrong. Something's wrong with her head, mister. She looks at Derek appealingly. Clearly there's something wrong with her head. She was running away from something like crazy. Now she's running right back toward it like crazy. Yeah. Well, let's hope the doc can get the police. Like I said, the door is locked, doctor. So, yeah, he he's ha trying to open the door. It's locked. Uh, he starts uh, pounding on it, uh, assuming that the the man who said who owns the place is in there somewhere. Yeah, you're getting no response. Damn. And he looks over at Logan. Where did that fool go? I honestly have no idea. I mean... He didn't I'm come sure. back into the diner? Not that I saw. Uh, and with the rain hitting him uh, in the face, uh, just drenching him, he resigns and starts heading back to the diner. Okay. Brandon looks towards Amelia uh, after looking between all of them and says, Well, ma'am, where do you want to go now? You want to go with us or you want to go with the waitress? I... <laughs> she looks frustrated and confused. I... I just... I don't know if I should keep going or go back. I, I just know he's... There's something happened to my, my grandfather and I... Something awful. I, I don't know what it is. I, I just... I remember it. I remember it vividly. He'll look over towards the waitress. Where's her grandfather's house, ma'am? Uh, make an intimidate check. Um, she kind of stammers a little, and she said, it, it, "It's it's just up a ways. There's there's an access road up a little north of here." Well, what do you say, Derek? Can we take the lady home? How do, how do the driving conditions look? Not very safe. You'd have to go at a very slow crawl. It looks a little rough out there. 
I'm not sure we'll find it very well, especially if she can't remember the way. Well, it's only up the road a little ways. And we can't stay here, can we? And, and Mary said, if you're worried about it, she said, I'm sure I can get her home with Sam's car. I know the way. And then Brandon will kind of step in a little bit and whisper towards Derek. I don't trust these people here. Something weird's going on. Fair enough. Start heading out the door. So, uh, the, the doctor walks in as you're having this conversation. Uh, the bell rings and the bright light and... He shakes himself off again. You guys are finishing your conversation. Why are we all uh, standing around here? What, What is it we're doing? Well, Doctor, we're going to take the girl home, and then we'll be on our way. Take... You know where she lives? Oh, yeah, it's up the road away. It's turn left, right? Now look towards the waitress. She kind of shrugs and says, yep. Up the road and turn left. Those are your directions. Up the road, turn left. In this rain, you think that's good enough instructions? I mean, um, I'm inclined to uh, agree with the doctor. I think we need to go. You're asking to get lost and stuck out there. Please, my our grandfather needs help. Can't just stay around arguing, please. <sighs> Looks like Derek's heading to the car. He's gonna search the boot and see if he can find that bottle. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's not back there. You do find Damn. a flat you do find a flashlight though. Didn't want that. Throw it back in and Mm-hmm. Keep uh, now I'll keep that to search for the bottle. Okay. Um you look around and you find it tucked under the front passenger seat. Does it look as full as it should be. No, sir. Logan! Hmm. Amelia is just going to continue outside. Please, let's just get out of here. Please. Where is she going? She's uh, she's heading to the car. Okay. Hi. Oh, God, I don't know what's going on here. This is absolutely insane. Mary says, "Stop her! It's not safe out there." You can see she goes to the window and just kind of looks out the window at you guys. Brandon kind of casts a last look back towards her as he's running in the rain towards the car. You can see her mouthing the word shit to herself. And Dr. Price gets it in the car as quickly as possible. Uh, just absolutely miserable and angry. <laughs> yep. Uh, when Brandon gets in, he'll look at the others. I'm sorry, guys. There's something weird going on with those people. Are you starting the car, Derek? Oh, I've got to get back out to do that, don't I? Yep. <laughs> I'll say. I mean, who just leaves a truck out in the middle of the road? 
If it's up the road, let's just... Um, you can see... I'm really kind of breathing heavily. I... I... I don't... I know something's there. I don't know. Something's going on. I... I know... I know I sound crazy and... I know, but... It's frustrating forgetting everything and... There's... There's something. I, I don't know what it is. Well, maybe you should just follow us to where we're going and then we can call the no, cops. No, I, I need to see my grandfather. I need to, I need to make sure he's okay. I, I just... Derek, we'll put it in reverse. Yep, okay. And you... You do? Yep. And you can drive on. Um, make a drive check for me. <laughs> okay, you're having a little, <laughs> you're having a little trouble. Um, but you you drive just a little ways up the road. It's not very far, and you can see that there's an access road off to the left. Yeah, you don't quite crash into the diner. You're going very slowly, I take it. I don't know if I'm going at all with that roll. Yeah, you're you're you are able to drive. It's just um it's very slow going. Yes, the rainy road image. Sure. There it is, there it is, the left there. Thank you for <laughs> the the road itself is graveled. Um, and Amelia, the road when you see the gravel, it does look faintly familiar. And you kind of have this vague memory of driving up this road yourself in a car. And Amelia nods as they hit the gravel. And start making the way up. Yes, this is this is it, this is it. I I, I have like some vague memories of driving up here. I drove a car up here. How did I get so far? Okay, uh, Logan needs a quick bio break. Why don't we take a quick brief intermission for bio All right. and come back. Pause. Okay, um, Derek, I need another driving check for the road. I'm um, going exceptionally slow. The Yeah, I'll give you a bonus die because the road is graveled and so it's not as slippery as the actually the main road. It's better than the main road. I actually think I'd be better at this than I've proven so far. Very nice. Okay, so you make it up uh, without too much difficulty, actually. Um, the, you, you like the gravel road much, much better than that main dirt road. Um, and, oh, oops. that's extremely dark. Hold on a second. Let me get you a little bit of light here. It's not quite that bad. It looks that bad. It does. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Amelia looks out the window towards the car in the shadows. I... Maybe that was... Maybe that was mine. Maybe I... It does look familiar. It's actually not... It's it's actually more... F a little fancier than the picture I have there. It's... Um... Uh... Derek, you recognize it as kind of... As a... Like a roadster. 
Here, you can you can turn it if you were kind of gonna. Oh yeah. That's better. You wanted to come in kind of from the side there. Um. It's a it's like a, a an expensive roadster car. Um, but you can see from in your headlights that it has um, it has smashed into a tree and its whole front end is like an accordion. Does that look familiar? And you can see a house. This does look vaguely familiar, Amelia. There what? is a an, a door here. Uh, yeah, it, it looks it looks familiar. I, it could have been the the cottage. I I think she kind of turns her head. Uh, looking over at Logan. Um, is he looking towards her or just out the window? He's looking straight out the windshield right now, trying to see what exactly is going on. Or Yeah, it's, it's hard to see much of anything ex unless it's in the headlights. You know, and so, right. it look, so Derek is kind of like maneuvering the car a little bit looks like back and forth and kind of shining the light on parts of the building. It looks quiet. You don't see any lights on inside. Well, Miss Amelia, does does this look like it? I don't know if it's it, but I need to see if he's okay. She's, uh, look to Derek. Please just put the car in park and you see if he's okay. I'll, I'll go check with you, Amelia. Thank you. Brandon. Okay. Keep the car running. Alright. You keep the car running. Uh, so, Brandon, you and she get out. Yeah, Brandon gets out. I'm, I'm suspecting he still uh, has, has his coat for, with her. Uh, and uh, pulls his hat tight over him and mm -hmm. starts to make his way towards the house uh, looking at the windows or anything for any sign of any movement or any activity okay it sure doesn't look like it um, and you you approach the there's kind of like a, 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 a sorry a shallow set of steps, maybe five steps, that lead up to the front door. It's a little recessed. Um, and... And that car over there, there's no lights on or anything? No. Mm -mm. It's, it's very, very dark here. Amelia quickly hurries up to the cottage door um, as okay. she kind of goes towards the door, hesitates. I... Alright. Let's see if he's okay. She'll take the handle in her hands and twist it. The, the door is unlocked. Brandon kicks something on the ground and looks down and uh, picks up the crowbar, turns it back and forth in his hand, and starts to head towards the door. Yeah. Yeah. So you're you're a few beats behind Amelia. Um, you just go in, Amelia. As she peeks her head in, turning left and right, holding the coat very tightly around her neck. As she pokes her head in, Grandpa, Grandpa, are you in here? You don't hear anything. Um, let's uh, move over to the interior. 
those of you who have not gotten out of the car, you're there just in case we need you. But uh, Brandon and Amelia are going in. The door opens. Amelia, was that uh, was that your grandfather's car? I. Any... It might have been. It looks familiar. Uh, that's all. She, she makes her way in, looking around. She glances back at Brandon. That, that Logan fella, he's creeping me out. What about him? He keeps staring at me. She looks down the hallway to the right, seeing something. Yeah, the door here is open. What? what? What's that? She'll make her way inside. Can she see the? Uh, is it? Yeah, oh, she God. sees that. What? What is? What is this? She'll take a few steps back in shock. What? What's? Brandon will pull the crowbar up and kind of put a hand to to put her push her back a little bit step in front of her there's this bodies in here Brandon oh my god I, maybe one I, I hope it's not him maybe maybe, maybe there it's too dark to make out any details of the bodies but you can definitely see a, f a form on the floor that's clearly a body and another kind of over by the fireplace propped up against the wall. I, I, ha I have to see if, it, if, it, if it's him. I... And she grabs onto your arm and hauls you inside. Brandon steps in really slowly and scanning around for any danger with a crowbar in his hand. Amelia walks up to the first body here. Clear kind of disgust and fear on her face. She leans down. Um let's see. Make a spot hidden check. This is very hard to to see without a light, and there's no light. Uh, I I can't see anything in here. There maybe do you, do you have a flashlight at all, or maybe around here? And she looks around. When you say flashlight, you remember something reminds you that there's a flashlight in the kitchen, which is just next to you, next, the next room down. But there's this one in the kitchen, and she'll get up. Is it outside the hall? Like, do you have to go back out? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, you have to go back out into the hall. And she'll quickly make her way out, <coughs> her way towards the kitchen. And you can see the kitchen door is open as well. She hesitantly makes her way inside feeling around the walls. Yep. You remember right where it is. It's down here. There's a... Yes. There's some shelves down there. And there it is. It's sitting right there on the shelf. Yeah, she'll grab the flashlight quickly and turn it on. It's the torch. Ah. He's trying to catch up to her and he's like, hold on. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, okay. So, uh, you knew right where this light was. That's a good sign. Maybe this is your place. Maybe. I... Let's... Maybe we should tell your, tell your friends. Maybe. Maybe they should come inside.
Yes. Um, do you want me to... Uh, maybe you should wait by the door. I... I... I I'll wait. And, uh, and then we'll come out outside the door, just on the porch there, and kind of wave to him if, if he can get their attention. Yeah, you Frankly. guys can see him in the flashlight beam kind of waving you in. And the, the doctor seeing them, you know, waving the flashlight out there. Oh, oh, one of you should probably check to see what they want. Oh, uh, we'll stay right here in the car. Well, Uncle, what you say? Maybe you and I both go. I don't want to stop the car, Logan. If you want to take a quick, uh, quick look, I don't want to make this a long stop. I'm trying to get the doc back to his lab. He's, he's an important man. Okay, that, that's a no problem. Um, do you happen to have a, a light or anything? Yeah, just make sure it comes back, unlike my bottle under the seat, and I'll hand him the flashlight. Noticing they're taking too long, and he's just seen a body. He like rushes over to the car and taps on the windows with the crowbar. And as he does, Logan actually steps out. There's there's a there's a body in the house. Get in the car. We're going for the cops. Hold hold, hold on a minute. Wait, yeah, wait a minute now. The... No, 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 no. We're not getting in the middle of a uh. body. Get in the car. This is, you said there's a body in there. Is there, uh, did he just walk off? <laughs> yeah, he ran back towards the house. Right after he said get, uh, get in the car, he immediately took off back towards the house. Um, the doctor, uh, well hell, there could be, there could be people hurt in there. Yeah, body doesn't sound like hurt, Doc. So Amelia, Amelia's going in. The doctor gets out. The doctor gets out uh, for... From a medical standpoint, people might be hurt and need his help. Mm-hmm. Well, with the flashlight, you can see the scene a little more clearly. What? What is this? What is... What has happened here? I... I don't understand. What... What is that? What... Clearly there's a... There's a... The remains of a body right at your feet. And over by the uh, <clears throat> by the mantle of the fireplace, uh, there's an older man. And Amelia, you recognize that he's your grandfather. Amelia immediately runs over. Grandpa, no, 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 no. Doctor Price walks up to the first man that he comes across right here, and immediately evaluates him. He che he kneels down next to him kind of rolls him over onto his back uh checks a pulse looks uh -huh. looks you know looks at his body okay make a medicine check i'm gonna um kind of uh, unbutton his shirt uh you know pull his shirt down uh evaluate him just a little more thoroughly Okay, this is called pushing a roll, and if, if I allow it, you can roll again. Um, it means usually taking more time or taking a risk. In this case, it's just it's taking more time. He's going to do a much more thorough look over. 
Um, Amelia, you are looking at, um, she's, uh, you're looking at the body. And it looks like Brandon is as well. Yeah. When she cried out, he kind of followed her over there. Um. All right, Doc. Yeah, you're. <laughs> you're not. You're not. You're not really sure. Um. But. You're not sure what happened to him, but you're fascinated by. By the the condition that this body is in, it's it looks like part of his his legs were burned away by something. Mm -hmm. And his and... his arms are twisted, um, dislocated bones. Yep. So, uh, Doctor Price uh, continues to kind of evaluate him. Uh, confused at what could have caused this or what might have happened, uh, he he moves on over here uh, to Amelia's grandfather mm -hmm. and starts looking him over. Okay, um, give me a medicine check for him. Uh, when when he steps up, Brandon will say, uh, "Looks like a shotgun blast, Doc. I've seen enough gunshot wounds." Might have bled to death. Okay. I'm sorry, Amelia. Oh, Grandpa. Yes. Well. Who could have done this? What? And Doctor Price is looking around. Uh, looks around the body. Looks at him. Uh, he's listening to what. Uh, Mr. Hunt tells him Yes, well said It does look like he was shot with a weapon of some sort a shotgun But I don't think that's what killed him Look, look here And he points to the relatively small pool of blood around him He was dead before he was able to bleed out from that shotgun blast Most likely a heart attack Oh my God. This book? Probably brought on right after being shot. Amelia, you need to make a sanity check. And Logan, you do as well from seeing the first body. Okay. Uh, Amelia, yeah. Lo okay, so Logan, you... You lose five sanity from seeing this body up close. So that is, um, that's temporary insanity. So I want you to think about how this affects you. So I'll let you decide, but it's, it, it you, you're unhinged in some way now. Um, Amelia, you... You suffer three for the for seeing your grandfather dead. Um, so you're you're taking it hard, but there's a part of you that kind of already knew he was dead, and you kind of remember now. <laughs> she looks down to her grandfather, and wipes away the tears in her eyes. And you, you, as you're looking, you, you see there's that little box by his, by his feet, along with a shotgun. And you can see Amelia kind of fixates on the, the box for a little bit. Nice. Um. Um, so what are the two other the two of you doing, Price and Brandon? Uh, Doctor Price is you know is still looking the bodies over, uh, looking the injuries over, looking around the room, 
Uh, he's just trying to figure out what ha what could have happened. And then he looks over to Amelia. I don't suppose your grandfather had a phone here, did he? Amelia takes a moment. She seems to hold her head as she... Ignoring the doctor completely. And she sits down in the chair. Brandon uh, puts a hand on her shoulder and not really totally sure what to say to her, but uh, I'm very sorry, mm -hmm. Amelia. I... I remember... I remember what happened. Clem, Clem, she... She... She came in threatening... My father with a sh my grandfather with a shotgun and and Billy Billy Esterhaus she threatened me with a, the, that crowbar that crowbar there and she points to the one Brandon's holding that was there apparently Clem was visiting his girlfriend Mary his new Mary at the at the diner that the woman. I, I threw I threw a poker at Billy and Grandpa Grandpa one for Clem. So the shotgun went off. The shotgun went off and Grandpa he, he went down. And the band, they demanded money. They, they demanded our money. And so they, they went for the cask. The, the casket there, and she points to the cask on the floor. When when they opened it, everything... So, something came out of it. Something came out of that box. That, that's when I ran. That's when I ran. Something was in that box. Dr. Ouch. Price walks over to the box and just standing above it. Not, not bending down, not picking it up, but just standing. I uh, just looks down into the box. Grandpa told me never to touch it. You can see that there is like dust or, or rather ashes all around, um, scattered around where the box clearly fell. It looks like it's about maybe 18 inches long and maybe eight inches deep and about eight inches uh, deep. I mean, uh, high. And outside, while this is going on, Derek, you're sitting in your car. Yes. With the engine running, and you see somebody kind of stagger into the headlights kind of coming from that direction. He's coming this this way. And you can see him kind of, he holds his hand up, kind of covering his eyes because your headlights are a little blinding. And he, he kind of glances back over his shoulder and, and he turns um, with kind of this crazed look on his face. And he starts coming in your direction. Can I see anything any better as he comes closer? Um, he looks pretty banged and beaten up, and he's he's um he looks like a guy who's just run a marathon. Like you can see, he's he's out of breath. He's kind of wide-eyed. Um, He's wearing overalls and boots, uh, and um, but they're they're just soaked. He's he's soaked to the bone, and he he looks uh, an absolute mess. Um, make a spot hidden check for me, please.
Okay. Um, what do you do? Are you just, are you watching him come over? I'll lock the door. <laughs> okay. Um, he, yeah, he, he comes over and he's going, Mister! And he's kind of, you can see he's trying to look and see who's in the car. Because obviously with the light in his eyes, he, you're, you're, you're sure he cannot see you. He doesn't really know even necessarily that there's anybody in the car. He comes over um, and he starts pounding on the door and saying, Mister, somebody in there. Anybody, somebody in there. I'll, I'll open the window a little bit. Roll it down. Okay. He says, oh, thank God, you gotta get me out of here. What happened? <laughs> it's it back there, I don't know. You gotta get me out of here. I'm coming around. And he, yeah, uh, he, he steps out into the, the, uh, beam of your headlights. Yep. And you can see there's this light. Your your attention was on him when he was talking. And now you see there's this kind of shimmery light thing in the headlights. And the guy just kind of stops. And... um. and stands perfectly still and the light starts to move towards him describe this light please I sent you a private message you should oh. see it just not paying attention sorry And just make a power check for me, if you would. That's POW? Mm-hmm. Okay, you sit there... ...kind of stunned. Oh shoot. That's, that's not it. That's that's wrong. Yep. Should I clear it? Yep, that's fine. I it, I'll send it I'll send it to you in a minute. Um you watch kind of fascinated as this light engulfs him and um like like surrounding him like in a halo. And he starts to to shake, and you can hear him screaming. Ah! Um, everybody inside can make a listen check, a hard listen check for me, please. Uh, can we get our tokens? Oh, yeah, right. Mm. Should we go through our character sheet, or...? I just there, went into my character sheet, yeah. There, yeah, that's fine. I moved you back. Um, Amelia and Brandon, you kind of believe you hear something outside, some shouting. But you're not exactly sure what it is. What was that noise? I, he'll he'll stand up. I heard it too. And she spins around the light and starts heading towards the front door. Brandon will follow too. 
Okay. And you you get out there and you can see that um, the car is still there. Oops, those are ginormous. Um, and there's now this kind of, but you don't actually see anybody there, as it turns out, when you come out. Brandon will make his way over towards the uh, car and looking inside, you know, uh, putting his hand try to cover the light a little bit see if you can see uh, Derek still in the car he is he's kind of sitting there almost like in a catatonic state you all you all right no response there's I think whatever was in that that box there. <laughs> and she's looking around but frantically. Maybe I don't know if it's still in the house or maybe that's what screamed. Brandon will will uh, grab his arm, Derek's arm. And have the cro the uh, crowbar in his other hand, not in a aggressive manner, but um, hey, Derek, Derek, you in there? He's not making a response. Where, where's the doctor? Brandon starts to back away from Derek and looks towards the others. Where's the doctor? Did was the doctor coming out? Um the 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 doctor was still looking at bodies inside. Mhm. Mm um he, he barely noticed them get up and walk out. He's just he's uh he's kind of enthralled with what's going on in there, so he, he assumed okay. they were checking on something, but he, he's continuing what he was doing. All right, so if you're taking longer, uh, eventually you're gonna, I'm going to um, give you some more info about the... Uh, let's see. Oh, shoot. Okay. So, yeah, that guy, the, the <coughs> body, um, you actually, on closer examination, you learn some more. So you can look at that while they're out here. So what do you all do? It's, it's, Derek is just sitting there in the car. It may have been him that was calling because you didn't really hear it that clearly. And Amelia's going to go inside quickly to check on the doctor okay yep he's 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 examining the first body and she seems a bit relieved and she comes back outside and looks to Brandon looks to Logan what what's wrong with your friend Logan actually doesn't say anything he just kind of storms past and he's he's very rigid and he grabs the the handle of the door and just starts yanking on it violently and then looks down and hits the release button and opens the door in a very aggressive manner and slams it back closed and just starts punching on the dashboard and then you can see him throw his face into his hands and just start shaking his head and you just hear him start to to yell into his hand Amelia moves over to Brandon 
<laughs> it's, it's just because of that, that box. However, was it at me? I don't. Brandon's got his like mouth agape right now and uh, kind of just totally confused. And uh, he says, uh, "Maybe you better wait right here." I'm... The headlights of the car just went out. I'm not waiting anywhere alone. Um, um, uh, uh, maybe go inside with the doctor. Uh, something's going on with these guys here. I, I better to stay in groups. Like I, I, I guess she'll make her way back inside. Okay. Um, Brandon will go over towards the, the, towards Logan, and try to get his attention now and be. Logan, you're all right. You can see Logan is just. He is visibly shaken, and you see him, he's got his arm reached down between his legs, and it looks like he's reaching for something on the floor. He doesn't respond to you, though. He just ignores you. Is the, uh, is the window down? No, man, it's raining. Uh, Brandon will open the card the door and uh, and kind of shout to him Logan we need you are you all right come on now keep it together man Logan just continues to paw around by his feet where the fuck is it where is it where's what <laughs> Yeah, it's not there anymore. <laughs> the hooch, man. Come on. Did you... You didn't take it, did you? Did you take... No, of course not. What's the matter with Derek? He's standing there. I have no idea what's wrong with him. That's he's not just, my problem. He's just sitting in the driver's seat. Um, Derek, you can come back anytime you feel like... Derek would. Derek opens the door, jumps up, running out. Doris! 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 He's screaming at the top of his lungs. And yeah, you, see, you see Derek go running off through the mud. He even, he falls a couple times and gets back up and um, he seems suddenly like he came alive and is desperate it was quite sudden Logan doesn't even seem phased by that and starts climbing over the seats and reaching under under the driver's seat and reaching back into the into the back seat feeling around on the floor reaching around feeling for this he, he finds it tucked under the driver's seat pulls it out and just takes a couple of long, hard uh, swigs off. Okay. And after taking his drinks, he just breathes heavily and, and is almost hyperventilating. Did you, did you see that shit? Where? where what, what could do that? You're talking about you're talking about the gunshot wounds. I don't know what it was, but it... Uh, I, what it... Why did we come here? What are we doing? Brandon will stand up straight and, uh... Uh, look towards the house and uh, uh, We'll be getting out of here soon. All right, you just keep it together. All right. No, I That that girl in there. That's Sarah. 
That's Sarah Withers. I know her. She's fucking with me. She's fucking with all of us. That's Sarah. You know her. Sarah Withers. You ask her. Ask her. Brandon pulls his hat down a little tighter and... She's gone! She's gone! Doris, come back! Doris! Yeah, you, you just see Derek standing there in the rain, just looking... Brandon, it's really dark, but even just his dark form you can just see his shoulders are hunched down he looks utterly lost have I do I have any clue are these guys just losing it from like maybe some trauma from the uh, the bodies here or uh... it could be just seeing a couple bodies though shouldn't have quite the effect, their experience yeah. would quite push them that far over the edge, but it could. Derek never went in the house, though. And yeah, and he was yeah, never in the house. Right. Um, <clears throat> so he's probably he's walking towards uh, Derek, and uh, kind of steadily, not not too close to him. Uh, he's got the crossbow, the the, the crowbar, crowbar down by his side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it says, uh, holding his left hand out towards him, and says, uh, Derek, now come on, man. What did I you see? I saw her! I saw her. Doris is with him! It's the light of heaven! I saw her! I saw her! I want to be with her! Find it for me! I need that light! I want to go back! I want to see her! And he'll just kind of grab his hand and just start shaking. Brandon will uh, back away from him and uh, kind of towards the porch and say, uh, Derek, there's nobody here but us, man. It's the light of heaven. It came. I saw it. It, it, it brought, brought the fella in the overalls in with her. And it, I should have gone, but I didn't have the strength. I just wasn't strong enough. I, I want to be with Doris. I want to be with Doris. At that point, Brandon runs inside to find the doctor. Okay. When you go in and you uh, look for the doctor, you see him. He's... Uh... Got a little notepad and a little nub of a pencil that he keeps in his pocket. and He's sketching what he's seeing here. Um, at one point after you walk in, he's kneeling down, and uh, especially over here at this one, he's kneeling down and he's scooping up what looks like uh, maybe some kind of gelatinous substance, some powdery substance, and he's just trying to, like, use a piece of paper to scoop them into uh, maybe a cup that he found or something. Uh, he's, he's essentially just um, investigating and, and, and looking over everything, drawing and collecting everything he can, just completely uh, kind of enthralled by what's happening here. When you walk in, he says, oh, oh, look, look at this, look at this. This is, this is amazing. I, I don't know what could have caused all this. Look at, look at the bricks. Look at, look at, look at the burns here. That's amazing. I mean, he's just going on talking about uh, all, all of his findings. I don't see how it's amazing. Dead folk here. It's, it's caused by that, and she again points to the casket. Did you, did did you need something? Is everything okay, Brendan? Um, oh, Brandon walks in kind of slowly and uh, brushes some of the rain off of his hat. And the boys are losing it out there. Uh, Logan says he knows you. He knows who you are, Amelia. 
Have you ever met him before? No, no way. I don't remember him. He keeps looking at me though. Uh, Doc. There's, there's something wrong with Derek. Well, what do you mean there's something wrong with him? He's, he's like he's lost his marbles. He's out there screaming about the light and seeing somebody named Doris and he wants to be with her again. Yes, well, maybe the shock of all this was too much. Anyways, we must get back to the diner. No. It's the only place that we know that has a phone. Maybe, but maybe we can get more answers. My grandfather, he kept a, kept a diary in his study. Maybe he's got some, some information on that thing. The casket. I, I know it has something to do with that. I, I just, I just know it. Yes, well, look about, collect your things, whatever it is you need, because we won't be coming back here. She'll take a quick glance over to Logan, back away when he's approaching. Logan just charges straight up to her, grabs her by the shoulders, and pushes her against the wall. Your name, your fucking name is Sarah Withers. I know you. I know you. <laughs> no, it's... It's Amelia. Don't you try and trick me. I Get know you. Me. You're Sarah Withers. No, I'm not. Brandon will grab him if he can. Yeah, he can. And uh, try to push him to the wall. You have. You don't know what she's doing. I know. I know what she's doing. She's. She's playing all of us. What are you talking about? Logan, calm down. Yeah, Dr. Price walks out of this room that he was just looking in, sees them kind of pushing each other back and forth. What the hell is going on here? This... You keep pushing me against the wall and... claiming I'm someone I'm not. I'm Sarah. That's Sarah, Sarah with us. You know who you I, are. I don't. My name is Amelia. So you say, but I know you. I know you. No, you don't. You don't know me. That settles it. We must get to the phone. I'm getting the diary. <laughs> she makes her way over to the... The phone is also supposed to be in the study as well. And the study door is open right here. There's a... Oh, there's a phone here? There's a phone in here, yes. There's a, there's a phone on the desk here. By... A... And where's the... Uh... Well, it's, 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 I guess, literally it's on the wall by the desk. And yeah, you know that his diary, he keep, he kept it in here, Amelia. Yeah, she'll root around for it, hunting for it. And as she's rooting around, Dr. Price picks the phone up and uh, hits the receiver a couple of times and then turns the rotary around uh, on zero, uh, trying to get an operator. It It is utterly dead. No, it's just a, it's just a line. Um, well, yeah. It, yeah. It's, it's completely dead. And, uh, Dr. Price just slams the, uh, headset back down on the receiver. Damn it! Now we have to go back to the no, diner. No! That merry woman! I think she was in on it, the whole... Attacking me and my grandpa. It was her boyfriend, after the, all. The authorities must be notified of this place. Once. At once. Immediately, just... we must be off. Oh, she turns back around and grabs the diary and starts reading it. Brandon yeah. just oh, glares at Logan as he walks past, and uh, and heads towards the uh, them talking about the phone and and uh, he says, "Is the phone working?"
Doc, did you get the phone to work? And uh, he just he, he just gruffly rums out, "No, it's not working. It's dead." You see, Amelia picks up an old, faded book that looks like a journal or a diary and looks like she's starting to thumb through it in the middle. Yeah, she buries her nose into the, the notes, reading them very carefully. Look, her eyes kind of going back and forth across the words. Uh, meanwhile, what's going on with the rest of you? Um, uh, the doctor is uh, going to make his way out. He looks at her and shakes his head, makes his way out here to them, uh, to Brandon. Brandon's got to get back to the diner. Brandon's sitting there talking to uh, Logan kind of quietly and uh, just telling him to calm down and uh, uh, get a hold of yourself, man. Maybe take it easy on that bottle. We can't lose our heads. My head is perfectly clear, okay? She is Sarah Withers. I know her. Well, well, where do you know her from? School. Yes, well, whether you know her from school or someplace else matters not. What matters most is that we get the police involved. The authorities must be made aware. I don't remember if uh, there's a police station around here. There's a phone at the diner. Well, we couldn't get in there last time, though, remember? Then we break the door down. There are dead bodies in here. <sighs> well, our driver seems to be having a problem right now. Then you drive. Are we going to leave him here? The police will come back for him. I guess you're right. Young man, there are dead bodies in that room over there. Dead of mysterious circumstances. Don't you think the most important thing that we could do right now is notify the authorities? Yes, of course, yes, yes. Of course. He kind of stares off towards the wall and deep in thought and uh, looks back over to Logan. We gotta go get the cops. Right, Logan? We gotta tell those cops that Sarah Withers is trying to get at me. I'm not gonna, I'm not letting that happen. And Dr. Price will look back in the room. Girl, come along. Wait, she still flipping through the book. I'm almost done. You can read no. in the car. <sighs> Brandon's like... Uh, confused by... He's trying to get it. You're breaking up. Hello? Rogue? Rogue, you're breaking up bad. Yeah, we don't hear you now. I don't hear him at all. Can you guys hear me? Mm -hmm. Yep, now we yep. hear you. 
Yep. You said last last I heard was you said Rogue is looking around. He's all confused. That's the last um, I heard. Yeah, he was he was confused by um, uh, his statement, Logan's statement, and he says, um, "Are you saying she's trying to hurt you? She's trying to get at you." Don't, don't worry, don't worry about it. She's just keep an eye on her, okay? I'm telling you, I'm telling you, okay? Yeah. Yeah, all right. Um, I, I mean, I guess we gotta get out of here. Wait, wait. Whatever that. Whatever was in that casket. Something. Seems my my grandfather used for her. Some of his uh. Physician work, it seems. I... I'm not sure, but... Based on... What's in these notes here, it's in this book, it's... Some form of... Strange... Uh, I know, some sort of strange abortion techniques, I... I don't know. But... but hey. A strange what? Abortion techniques. Like, it, the thing in the casket, it's a living thing. However it was, and it's not supposed to escape, it's supposed to remain within it. This has all become... far too fantastical. No, it's... We must get... The authorities involved. And what are they gonna do? There's... Everyone's dead. Except for whoever killed them. They're probably out there still. And... and she again looks the pages. Look. No. And she'll shove the journal towards the doctor. All this... All this here. Detailing what was in the casket. Not exactly, but... At least some sort of... Procedure, some sort of... I don't know, ritual of sorts. There's words being chanted and... Shite. Rituals, chants, none of it makes any sense. There, there might be something else in the house, please. Let's. Maybe someone else. There's someone else who's. who attacked us. Exactly why we must call the police. Um, Logan, it looks like you're at the front entrance, is that correct? E yeah. You can see Derek, is Derek still standing out in the rain? No, he's walking quietly around the whole house, just kind of, like, Doris, I'm sorry. Doris, I'm sorry. I want to be with you. Come back, Doris. Doris, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it, Doris. Please, Doris. Oh. She meant nothing, Doris. All right, Logan. You can see, um, you can see him sort of walking around dimly, um, and off in this direction, you see a dim light kind of coming up the road. Derek doesn't appear to see it. He's kind of lost in thought. Logan turns his head sideways and squints hard trying to identify what this light might be. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. 
it's tough to tell what it is. It's very, um, very... It's flitty, it's, it's thin. Here, I just sent you a little description. Except that it's actually moving towards Derek, not towards you. Um, so Logan sees it coming up the road, and he calls out, Hey, hey, what is that? Um, yeah, okay, you see it. You're not sure what it is, and I'm going to send you a message. Um, Derek, you see the light now. Okay. It is, it is moving towards you. Is it the same light? It is. <laughs> Doris? Doris! It'll start moving toward it. Um, are you guys, so you guys are looking around in the house, it sounded like some more. Uh, uh, no, Brandon? Uh, Brandon was going to, um, try to arm himself if that shotgun or something was yep. still there. okay, the shotgun is still there. Um, Amelia's going to move to the kitchen and she's actually going to start looking around for some of those ingredients that's listed in uh, the journal. Okay. And... Dr. Price yes, is following. In fact, okay, so yeah, um, you you recognize that you've seen those things in the kitchen before. Um, you didn't know what they were for, but they, they're kind of odd. Your grandfather kept those. Like, and you you asked him what they were for once, and he just said they're just curiosities. And Dr. Price is following Amelia around, trying to talk some sense into her, into getting her to leave with the rest of them so they can go to the police. Mm-hmm. She's kind of rebuffing him. No, 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 look. Look, if I, if I get this together, if I... Whatever this black box is, you or, or someone is going to hold the casket and then maybe... Maybe whatever it is, if we, if we, if we find it, we can... Coax it back inside. There's, there's words. And Brandon, you step out. You've got the shotgun now. And you, yeah, you can see that this light. You see Derek, because he's from your, from where you're standing. Derek is like between you and this sort of light halo form um and derek looks like he's like he's in a halo so you see him kind of outlined his his dark form against this bright uh increasingly bright light um that begins to kind of engulf his his it's not quite at him but he looks almost heavenly himself right now is that, uh, is that Logan? Is Logan seeing that? Logan's standing there staring. What is Logan doing? Logan is actually going to... He sees this light coming, and he drops to his knees, and the water and the mud sloshes around his legs, and he puts his hands together and then closes his eyes real hard and puts his head to his hands and just starts to really lowly um, pray. He's just going on, 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us, and continues on, and he just keeps repeating this over and over and over. And he, he's kind of shaking his head the entire time. And every time he repeats this, he he sort of closes his eyes harder and harder. And you can, uh, I guess, if the light was good enough, you would be able to see his, his knuckles whitening as he's tightening his fists tighter and tighter. What is Derek doing? Uh, unless you tell him he sees something different, he's saying, Doris, Doris. Make, make, make a power check, a hard power check. No. Yes, she's coming for you, Derek. Opens his arms to her. Brandon, what do you do? You can see this light has surrounded him. And his, his arms kind of fall to the side. And his head goes back. Um, Brandon comes out uh, under the porch with a shotgun and shouts, Derek! And he'll, uh, if he shoots at the light, he's going to hit him, huh? Oh, absolutely. There's, um, there's no possible way to shoot that without shooting him. It, it's it's completely engulfing him. Um, he'll try to shoot, uh, just shoot a warning shot off up in the air, uh, see if it startles it or does anything like that, of course. That's what he'd probably do. Um, Derek, make a luck check for me. Okay. Nope. Um, and so the the shot, yeah, the shot kind of, there's a shot that goes wide. And, um, and Derek, uh, you, 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 Brandon, you start hearing Derek, he's, he's saying, um, He's calling out a name, and suddenly he starts screaming. Logan will hear this, and he's shaken by the shotgun blast, and he raises to his feet and runs over and tries to wrestle the shotgun from uh, uh, Brandon. Uh, Derek, you need to reduce your... Um, Constitution by ten. Okay. Don. I do that on my character sheet. Yep. Mm-hmm. Inside the house, uh, Doctor Price lifts his head up and kind of cocks his ear a little bit when he hears the blast, uh, thinking it might have been lightning, but it sounded a little different. Somewhat confused and unsure, but still is trying to get. Amelia, out of the house. And Amelia, she's gotten everything together at this point. She's trying to make that black wax. Yep. Yeah, and she, hearing the shotgun blast, she looks to, looks to the doctor. <laughs> All right, um, grab the cask. Grab the cask. Mm. Um. Brandon, what do you do? You fired off a shot. You can hear Derek starting to scream, and he's starting to kind of twist like a convulsion. Yeah, and I think Logan attacked me, uh, or is trying to wrestle the gun out of my hand. Mm, mm hmm. Okay, uh, Logan, uh, try a, um, a strength check. And Brandon, you do a strength check. This will be a contested strength check. Oh, yeah. Um, 
you, Brandon, you didn't even see it coming. Like you, you fired the shot. Logan reaches out and grabs the shotgun out of your hands. <laughs> Logan just walks up, grabs it with two hands, and sort of shoves Brandon away from the gun, and Brandon's grasp releases um, or slips off, possibly due to the rain. And Logan just go, just keep, sh just start shouting at him. You shot him! You just shot him! <laughs> uh, Brandon falls back and stumbles back away from him, and puts both of his hands up towards Logan. What are you talking about? I was trying to save Derek. I saw you. You shot him. Put that gun down. I didn't shoot anybody. Amelia and the doctor, you get to the door now. Does he have the casket? I just saw you. <laughs> oh, Derek shouldn't be dead yet. Um, did the... That's con you're, you're reducing your constitution, right? I did. That, that was more of a comment than a... Than oh, actual... oh, oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> but you're finding Doris. You can hear her voice calling you. Um, does the doctor have the casket? Yep, and inside the inside the uh, house, the doctor is uh, humoring, doing whatever it takes to uh, get Amelia out of the house and back into the mm -hmm. car so that we can go. Uh, get the phone. Uh, she wants him to grab that thing, so yes, of course, he, he mumbles and he grabs it, uh, looking, you know, walking past the bodies, looking at them as he as he kneels down and picks it up off the floor, uh, picks it up and turns around and starts heading back to the door. I've got it, young girl. Let's get out of here now. All right. And then kind of hearing the struggle outside yeah, and running to the Right, yeah, you see the struggle as you come out the door. Logan and Brandon. Logan, drop that gun. I'm not the one you should be worried about. You just shot him. That's my arm. Oh, I didn't shoot anybody. I saw you shoot him. Logan! Calm down. You, Sarah Withers. You stay the fuck away from me. Just put down the gun, please. I'm not the one who's shooting the gun. He is. He shot my uncle. He shot... What uncle? Derek. Derek? What? Derek's your uncle? Hey, yeah. Dr. Dr. Price just looks super confused, uh, half hearing this, uh, trying to listen to everything, the rain coming down, uh, a shotgun being waved around. I don't, I, I don't know what's, what's going on here. We, we need to get the authorities in. And that you're saying that, and you look over, and for the first time you see the light that's engulfing Derek. It's not actually moving towards you. Yes, oh yeah, you guys see Derek. He is he is engulfed in a a growing nimbus of light. And Amelia Um Oh no. Brandon will shout out, Your uncle's over there! There's something happening to him! I'm trying to save him! Um. Okay, Doctor. And... Amelia immediately kind of drops the mixture that she had made, dropping the book, and... She screams and just starts running south.
Yes. Um. There, there goes Sarah Withers, Logan. She's running away from you. And as she starts running away, uh, Dr. Price shakes his head, looking at the light, um, noticing it for the first time. And he kind of snaps himself out of whatever's happening to him. He had an urge almost to walk towards it, but realized that he shouldn't. Something is wrong here. Something is very wrong. No one is acting as they should, and everyone is acting insane. Uh, Dr. Price, in the rain, starts making his way to the car. <laughs> um... Derek, you can try a hard power check. Is that what Logan is saying? Oh no, that's... <laughs> <laughs> you could! <laughs> yeah, you see, I don't know how you... Yeah, you, you just... You see Sarah, Sarah Withers running away from you down south. You're just gonna let her go? That's, oh I, no! I'm me. sorry. No, 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 no. He's gonna, he's gonna chase after her. You're not going to the cops. You're not telling on me. And she's just <laughs> screaming. It's gonna get me. <sighs> Brandon will try to uh, tackle him if he can and get that shotgun back. Um. Okay. Let's. Uh, let's do a... Chase? <laughs> a strength, well, let's do a strength check first to see if you can... Or, um, yes, do both of you do strength checks again, Brandon and Logan, to see if you can grab onto him and hold him. Oh. Fuck oh you, my Brandon. gosh. Yes, there. this is an epic God. struggle here. So... <laughs> Um, you both are wrestling back and forth. This is, and you fall on the ground. You're rolling in the mud. Um, Logan, Brandon is trying to take the shotgun away from you. Um, you're not sure why. And you, you just, you're trying to get after her, but she's getting away. She's getting away. Um, Logan just kicks Brandon. Just kicks him off. He he releases the shotgun. Just kicks Brandon away and just scrambles to his feet and starts running after. Okay. Um, Doctor Price is trying to start the car. I see. Yeah. The 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 old man standing in the rain. He sees. Uh, he sees uh, uh, Derek up here. Doesn't know what's happening to him these two wrestling over a weapon in the rain and the and uh, Amelia running off into the dark and he stands there probably with slightly arthritic hands trying to crank this thing and get it started with the rain just pouring down on his face <laughs> the car is not starting he's just cursing under his breath as he just continues to try and crank it and crank it and crank it um, trying to get the hell out of here um, Derek one more power check okay ah you make it um, you realize this is This is not her. You, the voice that was was your wife is actually. It's now sounding like a a strange wah 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 kind of sound in your ears. And you you look and you can see this kind of face that is sucking the life out of you 
can make a luck check. Okay. Um, wh how do you respond? I would like to respond by running away as fast as I can, following the good example. <laughs> okay. It's, it's kept others um, alive, which Amelia in particular. Yep. Yeah, okay. So you you stagger away. Um, and you're feeling weak, but you, so, um, <laughs> so let's see, try a dexterity check for me. Oh, you go face down in the mud and the, the thing begins to engulf you again. Doc, you're trying hard. Again, yeah, over his shoulder he sees him fall down and this light kind of engulf him again. Uh, so he tries harder. He's just kind of uh, getting towards panic mode here. Yeah, um, make, a, make a constitution check for me. Okay, your, your ticker's still going. <laughs> um... <laughs> And there's a there's lightning right nearby that lights up everything, and you can suddenly kind of see the whole scene um, with Logan and Brandon fighting over the shotgun, and Logan trying to kind of kick Brandon away. Um, Logan, if are you going to let Brandon take the shotgun and 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 get out because he's he's holding on to it. Then yeah. like you're not getting away with that shotgun. Right, yeah. He was going to just kick Brandon away and let go of the shotgun and then scramble to his feet and run off after Sarah. Okay, yeah, he's running after Sarah. Brandon, what are you doing? Um, now that uh, Derek is on the ground and that thing is over him, would I have a clear shot or is that... Yes, you would. Okay, I'll try to... Derek will fall back probably into the mud with the shotgun and slide a little bit and turn his attention towards the uh, Derek kind of go up onto one knee and fire a shot off in hopes yeah. of taking that thing out it is a shotgun it very well could clip him yeah at this range you're gonna hit him with shot um and I would know that too. Oh, absolutely, uh, you'd know that. Um, yeah, he'll he'll move in closer as fast as he can. Then. Okay. Um, make a dexterity check as you race through the the uh, mud. Uh you you oh. go down. Make a luck check. Oh. oh my god. You, you go down and the second round goes off. You were trying to get up close enough and you were about to take a shot. You slipped. You go down. The shot goes wide and the two barrels are now empty. Uh, and Brandon will he'll just try stumbling up <laughs> if he can make it to him and use it as a bludgeoning and try to swing at the light. Okay. Uh, yep, go ahead and make uh, a large club attack. Uh, you hit it. It's, you, it, it feels like you're just kind of going through air. You, you, and you, you kind of, or maybe even, maybe more accurately, it feels like it's almost water. You kind of, it's like you're smashing through water. And um, so you kind of splash it around a little, but, you know, did you smack the water? Did you hurt it? You're not really sure. And Dr. Price, um, at that last large lightning strike, uh, as he had his head turned over his shoulder, 
uh, seeing Derek on the ground with this light surrounding him, thought he noticed something, and just out of out of out of uh, last resorts, not knowing what to do, he gets in the car and turns the headlights on. Um. Okay. Derek, at that moment, um, when the when the lightning struck, you felt that it lost its grip on you, and so you started. You had an opportunity to roll out from under it. So you've kind of rolled away. Brandon came up. He he missed his shot. You're rolling away as Brandon kind of swipes through the air with the with the shotgun, and then the doctor turns on the light. Brandon, what do you do next? Yeah, I was gonna say after that swipe. Um, oh, did I grab my gun on accident? Sorry. Um, after that swipe, I was gonna uh, try to grab Derek and pull him away, and uh, at the same time, he's kind of shouting his name, Derek, Derek. Okay. You you grab hold of him and start pulling. Uh, what direction you want to go? Towards the the car. Okay. The light seems to just hover there in the light. You get Derek to the car. And if we can, we'll, I'll throw him in there and jump in. Okay. When he jumps in, the doctor turns and just asks, what is it? What is it? I don't Aren't know. you the doctor? The light starts to slowly move toward the car. Start the car. Is it Start cranked? Start the car. It is cranked. <laughs> okay. Let's get out of here. If we can. Okay, yeah, it is coming, it is in your direction, um, you start driving away, um, Derek, Derek, make a sanity check, because you're shaking and falling apart, possibly. Yeah, you can hear Logan as you start to pull away, you can hear Logan screaming Sarah's name down there. When you say, where's way. down there? Where's oh, down, down there? down south. Down south. Okay. In that direction, yeah. Um, so I need a driving, or I mean a sanity check from you, Derek. Okay. Your hands are very shaky on the wheel, um, so I'm going to require a drive roll from you. <laughs> um, the car is starting to swerve. I will give you a choice. You can have a nice, easy kind of crash into that, um, but the car will be stopped for the time being, or you can push the roll and try a desperate maneuver to, to um, like, steer the steering wheel really hard. Um, but if you fail, the, it's going to be a crash. Yeah, I've just been had the life sucked out of me. It's a desperate maneuver. Okay, go ahead. Try again. Oh. Oh. All right. The car swerves at the last possible moment, <coughs> missing that tree. Um, and you kind of bring the car back onto the road. And you can see the light kind of hovering after you. But the car is faster. I, I'm not going too fast. I want to keep it behind me. Yep. Okay. Um, so you are going down the gravel road. I will um, make one more driving check to get down that gravel road. 
<laughs> again, again, you can either you can either kind of soft pull off the road and um, have to try to start the car again, or you can push it and not cr and try to not crash. Push. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> okay. All right. Again, you have another close call where you're taking kind of a a corner a little too fast because it is a little bit of a windy road. Um, you narrowly, you you actually kind of the car scrapes along a tree, um, and shudders, and then but you kind of keep it on the road and you can see the light falling behind you, but you make it out to the main highway. Okay. North or south? South. Okay. Um, are you just going back to the diner? If I can lure it back there, that's my intention. Okay. Back at the yeah. diner then. Brandon will shout to them and he'll be looking in the back and... Amelia! We left Logan and Amelia! Well, they'll be off in the woods now. Almost impossible to find. You get back to the... You get back to the diner. Is, is it still following? It is. I just want to take the turn and try to lure it right into the diner. Okay. <clears throat> so you can put the car where you want to put it. What I want to do is go and I... Yeah, where is that? I've seen the turn before. Where is the... Like that. Yeah, I just wanted the, the, the other road. I don't know how the roads connect up. I see. So you're going to the um, gas station. Well, I want to go past it. I want to go right by, like, the corner of it, but I don't know where the other road I'm trying to get to is, where the turn is. I want to go by the... I want to try to get it to go in there, but I want to keep going by and end up over here. Okay. Turn to go back where we found her the first time. Ah, all right. Oh, I see. Yeah, it goes in the diner. And you head back down the road? And I will proceed. Oh. Yeah, which, which is there. Okay. Well... Let's um, let's go to the chase that happens. Oh, let me set that up real quick. The chase. Run, Sarah. Yeah. Oops. That's Logan not... is just gonna walk slowly <laughs> and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I am putting you to uh, Amelia has a bit of a head start here. And okay, so if you scroll down a ways. You will see, um, ooh, what's going on? Oh, there we go. I see the top part with, like, the forest foot. Yes. Right. So, yep. And you should see that there are some locations. So, Amelia, you're a couple of locations ahead of Logan. And so I have my own kind of little chase rules. These are not 100% the same as the as the standard rules. Um, the visibility right now is only two, so you can only see a couple of areas ahead. Um, so, your, your goal, Amelia, is you're trying to get away. Logan is trying to chase you down. So, um, each round you can try to, you can either move one location 
without making a constitution check or you can attempt a constitution check to move two locations but if you fail you're going to get winded and you will not um and you'll take penalties on your your attempts to do things and navigate through stuff so amelia how fast um, are you running due to her kind of rolling that you know five sand loss um i'm pretty much thinking with everything she's just gonna go for the con check just trying to like she doesn't care she's just trying okay. to get away all right then go okay, for so it con check mm-hmm <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, you're already kind of get you you get to move too, but now you're gonna be kind of blown out. So you get there, you can see that there's heavy foliage up ahead that you'd have to try to force your way through, or you can kind of go around a different way. Uh, That's up to you, but you don't know what's that way. She'll she'll go around a different way, uh, swerving around the uh, foliage. I guess. Okay. Ooh. All right, Logan. Are you uh, are you just doing slow, or are you trying to chase hard? Well, Logan is running hard after. Her. Um, I mean, he thinks he just saw his uncle get shot, and okay. so there's a lot of things going on with him, and now he's frantically chasing after Sarah, calling out. Um, so he's gonna he's gonna run hard. Okay. So go ahead and make your con roll. Okay, you're also getting winded, which not surprisingly because you've had a rough night. Um, first, you got to get through this low branch and roots um, as she's heading into the forest. So you can try a dodge or a spot hidden with a bonus die. Um, I guess we'll do spot hidden with the bonus die. Okay, go ahead. Oh, nope. You you smack and um, take damage. You you smack your head, take three damage, and um, and that kind of knocks you flat for a moment. Um. Which means you're gonna you, you're gonna be out for the next round as well while you kind of recover and get back up. Um, Amelia, it's back to you. You're only moving one because you're winded at the moment. Yes. So go ahead and try a dexterity check, mm. or you can move back and nope. head towards the foliage keep again. Forward. Fail. Yeah. All right. So you also you go tumbling down, um, and and also hurt yourself. And that is oh, only one damage. So the net gain is that you you both kind of slip and fall and you're hurt and. Um, and then you get back up again and continue. So, Logan, you can uh, try to get past these roots without falling down. It's very diff This is this is a very difficult because it's dense woods you're in. So running at night in dense woods very difficult. So again, spot hidden or decks. Okay, let's roll for the decks. Okay, you're all right. Amelia, you kind of get back on course. Logan, you don't have to worry, so you can move ahead. He's catching up to you, Amelia. You can you can uh, go through the uh, through these roots here. You can kind of see you always have a choice. Usually you have a choice of a couple of checks. Spot hidden or dex. I'll do. You get a bonus die on your spot hidden. I'll do that. I'll do spot hidden. Okay. Uh, where's spot hidden? All right. You see the, uh, you see it and avoid it, and you're okay. 
Um, Logan. You gonna Charging try to push your way through? Him. Yep. Alright, strength or navigate. Um, I think we're going, uh, strength there. Yep. Oh, I just shrunk my screen by accident. Oh, you make it. You are through. He's he's hot on your tail, Amelia. Amelia just thinks it's the light creature and it's just keeps running. Okay. So you So the obstacle um breaks visual, so he cannot see you right now. So Logan, you try to move through the roots or the stone the roots there again. Okay, so Dax. Mm-hmm. Ah, you made it just fine. So Amelia, he cannot see you at the moment. If you want, you can try to hide. Uh, would she have broken that kind of uh, mental break by now, or does she like does she realize it's him that's chasing her? Um, make a sanity check. Oh no! Oh sh no! She's gonna <laughs> keep just barreling forward then. Yep, yep, that makes sense. Um, there she goes. Yeah, she's gonna just go, uh, just forward. Mm-hmm. All right, give it a shot. Whichever one you're gonna do. Yeah. Okay. Smart enough to find a way through. Logan, you you can see her again. You're catching up. Amelia. You got a low branch ahead of you. Right, I'll uh, try to spot hidden. You made it. You get you you see it and duck and move ahead. Logan, navigate or int. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> I think we're just doing int. Okay. Ooh, yes, you move through. Very nice. And you got a critical, so I'm going to give you a bonus die in your next one. Like, you're getting you're getting some adrenaline here. Amelia. Oh, spot hidden again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You trip and fall. So you make it, you, you make it through, but you trip and fall take three damage and you're face down Logan the low branch you get a bonus die um yeah let's go uh, spot hidden was it okay so you'll get two bonus dice or dodge it's your choice yep you oh you make it through all right and so she has lost her turn because she she failed, so you get to go again. Spot hidden or dex. Let's go dex. Ah, he leaps over the roots, and he's caught you, Amelia. And she's just screaming. What? No! <laughs> now the light's coming, please! What Logan, is Logan doing? Logan is just trying to grab onto her wrists and keep her pinned. He's just, I just want to talk. I just want to talk, Sarah. I just want to talk. It's coming, please. It's coming. No, no, you can't go to the cops. You can't go there. I, we just, we got to talk. We got to talk this out, Sarah. Let's talk. We can't, we have no time to talk. Please. I'm, I'm not Sarah. I don't know what you're talking about, but we gotta talk. But what? You know what, Sarah? I don't know what you mean. This is coming. You remember. You remember, Sarah. I know. I, I'm not Sarah. I, I remember some things. I remember what happened, but not... What? What are you talking about? 
You remember. You do. I know you do. Remember? It was at the... It was at the frat house. No, I... What frat house? I don't remember a frat house. Please, let me go. Sarah, we gotta figure this out. You can't go to the cops. I, I'm not gonna go to the cops, okay? I, I just wanna leave. Why do you wanna leave so bad if you're not going to the, the cops? coming. Please. What light? What light? This is more lies. I know. It's, it's not, please. That's the thing. It was chasing me before. At this point, I mean, can Logan see that she's very convinced, yeah? That there's a light? Yeah, there's no light, though. You don't see right. any light. No, no, Sarah. I, you, look. We've got to figure this out, okay? We have to be able to move past this, okay? I... I can't have this. I can't have this. I... I don't know what he wanted me to move past in my name. It's, it's not... Sarah. Shut up. I know your name is Sarah. Sarah Withers. You... Stop trying to... Tr what... What do you want? Just... You wanna talk? Fine. She's trying to peer behind him. Pushing against his hands. Yeah, she has a moment of where she can just kind of focus a little bit, and to get away, she might do anything now. Whatever, whatever you want, please. You could screw up everything for me, Sarah. You know that you could. You know, I'm not going to have some ungrateful cheerleader ruin my time. Not my time. This is my time. I've got everything ahead of me. All right, all right. Whatever you say, whatever you say. I'm not going to go to any cops. And this, there's not going to be anything involved. Just don't, please. How do I know I can keep you at your word, Sarah? I... I, I don't know. Just you have to trust me. How can I trust you? Make a persuade check, Amelia. See if you come across persuasively. I just. You wanna? You can push it if you oh, want. She'll push. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah, she's protesting. And, Logan, you're kind of buying it. You think you've scared her, and that she she's not going to talk. Okay. Okay. Good. I, I guess... I guess I can believe you. Just, if don't ever go to the cops. Ever. I, I won't. I, I promise. The two of you see a light in the distance, and for a moment you panic, um, but it is downhill, not back uphill, and you can see its headlights. Oh, it's... Is that it's a just, car? Is that... It's a, it's a car. Maybe we can get out of these woods. Please, Logan, just yeah. let me get up. Let, let's go to the let's go to the car. Oh. Logan will stand up and extend a hand down. All right, Sarah, let's get out of this wood. All right, and she takes his hand very shakily and gets up. She's very injured, but she makes her way towards the light. It's Derek's car. They are trying to find you on the road. And Amelia hurries down with Logan, waving her arms. Don't 
trying to get their attention. Um, Derek, you see them come into the headlights. I will slow down. Say, open the door. We're not stopping. Jump in. <laughs> and Amelia hobbles up, hurrying, and hops into the car. Logan will also try and jump into the car. Yep, he get he. You guys squeeze in. I assume Brandon's probably in the front seat. Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> Logan will see Derek in the front seat, and he his eyes get real big. And goes, Uncle, I, I thought, I thought he shot you. He didn't shoot me. He saved me. I don't know what you mean. It was terrible. It wasn't Doris. It was awful. And then he just hits the accelerator. <laughs> And drives until he yep. hits Boston. Yep, you head back the way you came. <laughs> and leave Orchard Hill behind. Dr. Price just mumbling something under his breath about seeing his sister. Going back to Boston to see his sister. Mm -hmm. Amelia just has her head in her hands, sitting in the mid seat, just crying. Uh, Brandon's sitting in the front seat with his a small bayonet that he's been holding on to the whole time they've been driving around looking for them. And uh, he's just turning it over in his hands, looking at it, and looking out the window, deep in thought. Brandon just continues to stare, or Logan, sorry, continues to stare at uh, Sarah. <laughs> 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 that was fucking. <laughs> uh, that, that was frustrating and and uh, uh, intense and creepy. <laughs> I loved it.